Hey everybody, in this video we're going to be taking a look at integrated connection design with S3D and how you might be able to start from S3D to model your structure and then move into connection design for your complete structural design workflow. So I've loaded this basic frame structure here that I've previously designed. Now I transition into design. So right now it's actually doing a solve. So it's moving into the second portion here. It completes the solve, but I'm not interested in that for now. I'm interested in connection design. So we start off our design by picking ASD or LRFD provisions um, for what's available. So because I'm interested in AISC, I'm going to pick 36010 ASD provision. I hit start. We do a little bit of loading and then we move on into our connection design area. So what you can see right now is that I've actually previously designed um, one connection, but we're going to start again from scratch by designing another connection. So if you were to take a look at the render here, you'll actually notice the different types of members that my structure is made out of. So my structure on the far side, it's actually made up of a um, an I-beam column as well as some I-beam uh, beams and on this side we have a HSS column and some a W uh, or I-beam shaped columns. So in the previous one we designed a single angle but we used members 4 and 12 which were uh, this W to W configuration or I-beam to I-beam configuration. So let's take a look at another connection that makes use of <coughs> In IB, sorry, in HSS to W configuration. So I'm going to be picking um, these two members here. So going back into the wireframe, I'm going to be picking members 6 and 18, and I'm going to be considering the different connections that are open to me. So for HSS to W, you can consider shear connections or moment connections. For this example, we'll just stick with shear, and I want to be designing a uh, let's take a look at a single WT and we now have to pick our members. So we pick 6 and it highlights 6 over here and we pick 18 over there. In the model you can also see this basic representation showing um, the connection here and now we're ready to be editing this so we hit the design button here. Now that we're in this singular UI you notice the basic drawing illustrating which one is the parent member or the supported member, which one is the child's member or the supporting member, and which is the connection and which connection number that refers to. So connection one, there's only one connection in this assembly, so that relates to this one here. Let's take a look at our different options. So here is a hollow rectangular. So all of these properties here, from the dimensions to the material properties, um, all of this was pulled from your structural model. Okay, so this is not editable in this menu here. So if you wanted to edit these kind of properties, you would have to be editing it through your model. Um, and we do this this way because we consider the model to be the way you establish your structure. And if you carry on to connection design, you take those parameters. If you want it to be designed in the connection by itself, we also have the standalone connection design, which I've created a separate video for. Now, let's take a quick look at what this looks like from the defaults. So I'm going to hit render and see what this presents me. So that's sent a response to that server, and it's actually performed a complete render here. So what you can see here is that this has a clearance and it's a WT section here. You can adjust the different types of views, surfaces and wireframes, surfaces only or wireframes only. You can adjust for the different views here and you can also set different levels of transparency. So for this design, let's take a look at uh, the child member one. It's a similar kind of um, layout to the parent men member. It just gives you the different um, dimensions of your cross section as well as the material properties that were pulled from the model. Now let's take a look at our specific connection. So we have a single WT connection and you're presented with the different dimensions that are relevant to how you edit these dimensions here. So you always need to be referencing the drawing to understand which dimensions you're changing. So for example, if I wanted to be uh, making this uh, connection a little bit longer, 
then I would be specifying um, a longer H value. So a longer H value, say for example, I wanted to make this uh, 10 to make this more noticeable. Uh, maybe I wanted to thicken up the thicknesses. Um, and overall for the length, I'm happy with the length, so I'm not gonna change that. So if you take a quick look at the render, you'll notice that it creates the full re-render. And if you adjust the view once more, you will notice that the length has now changed um, over here. So let's see what else we can edit in this um, UI. So if you look at the specifications, you are given the option to change some material properties. This is the yield strength, the ultimate strength, as well as which side you want to be rendering on. So let's take a quick look at that. If you hit the right hand side, as opposed to the left, and you re-render, you will notice it now renders on the other side. <coughs> um, I believe it might have flipped. So I'm just going to change that back there. Now, if you look at the parent fixture, the parent fixture is basically saying how this connection, the single WT, connects to the parent member, which is the HSS column member. So you can specify um, whether you're connecting to the... Um, whether you're connecting by welds or bolts, but in this example, um, we're only limited to welds. So if you look at the weld pattern, <coughs> the weld pattern uh, doesn't look quite complete. So let's adjust that now. <coughs> for us to be able to supply the full weld pattern for the parent side, we specify the top laps, the bottom laps, and the left and right laps. So right now these are three, but we need to adjust these. So if you want to set this to be the full width, the top lap represents the TFW for the dimension. So TFW is the full dimension of 4, so I'm going to set these to 4 now. The left lap and the right lap, that's datum to the, the length, and the length we have at 5. So I'm going to set these to 5. So now I'm going to re-render that, but before I do, I'm actually going to be adjusting the, the weld. So I consider this weld to be a little bit too small, so I want to be adjusting this weld to have, say 0 0.3. But actually, aside from editing this one, I want to be adding a, a new one and editing this one instead. So because I, would, I did that, I want to be assigning now this fixture ID, instead of from one, I want to assign it to two to match to the new weld. Now I re-render that. And you'll notice that my weld laps are now the full lengths and they've also adjusted to the larger weld, um, weld dimension. So the clearance also doesn't look quite right. So you would set the clearance to this new value here. So the weld I had at 0 0.3 and my clearance I had 0 0.2. So I adjust that here in the child member. Uh, Re-render that once more. And as you can see here, now the clearance looks much better. Actually, the clearance would have to be 0 0.4, considering that the uh, the thickness is now 0 0.4. And I think it would also make sense to have this at this world size at 0 0.4 as well. So before we re-render that, let's take a look at the child one fixture. So the child one fixture um, is basically saying how the single WT connection connects to the child one member, so which is the I-beam. So if you take a look at this, we actually have the option to specify welds if we wanted welds now, um, similar to the parent side, but I wanna be showcasing how bolts work. So you have to look at the drawing on the left to give you an idea of what these dimensions mean. So R1 or C1 represents the initial dimension. So initial from a particular datum, C1 or R1. RS represents the row spacing or the column spacing. And RE and CE represents the column end dimension or the row end dimension. So these are grayed out because you shouldn't be directly editing them as it would be over constrained. So if you specify a particular so that's by accident. If you specify a particular um, row spacing, so I'm just going to leave this at three right now. You can specify, um, you can automatically calculate an equal dis equi equidistant um, R1 and RE dimension. 
So for example, we have one and six here, one and six added together gives you seven, seven divided by two is 3.5. So 3.5 would give me equal spacing. You can also specify your holes to be standard or oversized. I'm gonna leave this as standard. <coughs> And these bolts, I think they're about right, but I'm just going to be showing you how to add new bolts and edit new bolts. You can be including or excluding the thread, changing the grade, changing the material. So I'm going to be picking um, a grade A bolt with A36 material. I'm going to turn deformation on. Um, I'm not really happy with the size. Uh, I'll make them slightly larger just to illustrate the difference. I hit apply. And for this connection, you now have to specify this bolt fixture ID to two. I hit render, re render. And now I'm presented with these new bolts with my new spacing pattern. If you click into the forces menu, because this is integrated connections, connection design, you don't have the ability to actually edit these values because these values are pulled from your your model's results when it performs the analysis. So the analysis lets you know <clears throat> these are the forces that are present at the ending node of the member. So if you consider this <clears throat> to be your parent member, then at member six, these are the ending forces. Fx represents the axial um, axial direction. Fy represents along the, um, the height of the HSS and Z direction represents along the, um, the breadth direction of your HSS. Um, the similar concept applies to the child member and these are the forces here. So in general, you can't change these values. So when you're up to the stage of performing a calculation, you hit check design, it re-renders here just to make sure it's up to date. And then you're presented with a table of results. So you can see the different values as well as the, uh, the utility ratios. And it seems like we have failed this minimum thickness requirement over here. Now let's take a look at what kind of results are available to you. If you hit the report button, the report button gives you um, a complete overview as to how we came to these results in the summary table. So we have the full references to the AISC manual on the left. We provide the full step-by-step -step calculation in the middle. And to the right-hand side, we provide a summary of these results that we calculate as, the, as well as um, our uh, conclusion to the result and the utility ratio um, we provide. So you can hit download PDF to download a real PDF version of this file. So I download this and you hit open. And you can see this is the exact same as before, presented in a nice um, <coughs> readable PDF format. You close that, you can click the drawing button. This opens up a new tab. <coughs> and I guess because um, the members were quite long here, um, the views are a little bit small, but this provides a starting point for your detailing of your connection. If you wanted to do your own detailing, you can actually download the real CAD model once you hit the CAD model button here, so I've already downloaded a previous one, but I'll download another one again. You can open this up in your CAD modeling package of choice, whether that be SolidWorks, CATIA, or so on. And we also have a feedback button here, which we definitely value. Um, so please click that button and send us your feedback. So if you hit back, you're presented with the max utility ratio here. You can also continue to add more connections to design the rest of the connections of your structure. So this was just a quick rundown of integrated connection design. Please give us some feedback as this is one of our latest design um, modules that we've made available to you. Um, I hope to hear from you soon. Um, thanks for staying for this video. Thanks and bye for now.